Hello and welcome back to Rejects EU24. Um, I introduce to you this person I don't know anything about, so I'm entirely impartial about presenting the most awesome Kubernetes UI ever. Please welcome Joachim. Thank you. Um, right, so my name is Joachim. I'm a software engineering manager at Microsoft. Uh, I've been working in the cloud native community for a couple of years now. Uh, one of the things that I really find amazing is the, the amount of projects we have uh, and the, the pace of innovation uh, that we have in here. So I'm here today to talk to you about how we can hopefully make the, the, the whole experience or, or uh, user experience and user interfaces a bit more coherent. So like I was saying, we have uh, a very diverse ecosystem of tools. Uh, I stole this picture from the, I think, the annual report. And as you can see, there is like a, a, a very impressive evolution, right, of the number of projects um, that, that we have um, in the CNCF. And the next one, you probably saw it, it's the landscape. And uh, this is not the whole picture, I had to crop it. Uh, but it's, it shows how, you know, how amazing uh, the number of projects and, and um, you know, some of the projects uh, have this friendly competition going on, some of them com uh, complement each other, so I think it's very, um, it's something very unique, right? And then, of course, on top of all this, we each, each project has their own UI, uh, their own user experience, and that's part of what I'm here to talk about. So, first of all, uh, each project has their own uh, GUI or, or CLI, um, and, that, and that's a good thing. That's how it should be, right? I'm not saying it should not be like that. I highlighted three things here uh, that are related to that. So um, they should have their own, their own UI because uh, that allows them to have a specialized focus. Uh, so uh, you, know, you, you know what you want to do when you have your project. You know what your users should uh, see, hopefully, and, uh, and that's the specialized focus that, uh, that uh, that you get when you have when you build your own stuff, right? Uh, there's something about independence or aut autonomy. Um, you know, instead of depending on one big project, you have m uh, some some, some more dependencies. If you work in JavaScript, you have quite a lot uh, to, to to maintain, right? Or to keep to keep on, uh, sync. Um, yeah, and uh, the other thing, and all these are connected, by the way, right? But the other thing is that you have. Uh, your own choice of customization, right? So if you want to have your UI be a CLI with emojis, then uh, you can do that. You don't depend on one thing that will have to support that. So sure, each project should have their own UI. That's fine. However, uh, having their own UI also comes with uh, some challenges, right? So I highlight uh, three of those. Um, again, they're all related. So one of, of them is something that I think impacts uh, something that is very um, important for the cloud native community, uh, which is the you know welcoming new people, right? So when you when you go and you see that picture and you want to use a couple of those, and they have different uh, user interfaces or user experiences, that of course um, you know will it will require more time to learn them, I think. So so that's that's. That impacts most, I think, uh, novice users um, that are trying to learn those tools. There is also something about uh, the context switching. I'm a manager that likes to code. I know about context switching and how this impacts uh, people and myself. And so if you, if you now want to switch, uh, if you have to switch from a tool that is a CLI uh, tool to one that is a, that is a desktop um, application, and then maybe you have a web uh, a tool running, you have to switch uh, all the time, right? And related to that switch as well, there's the, the inconsistency between UIs and UX, uh, right? So maybe in one you have buttons that, uh, you know, or maybe in another you have to right click or something like that, okay? And now we pause there and we talk about Headlamp. So Headlamp is a modern, hopefully you agree, <laughs> looking uh, and generic UI for Kubernetes. Um, by generic, I mean that uh, you know, so, some UIs, I guess, f uh, maybe they focus more on, on the apps uh, side of it, on showing you the, the, the apps um, that you have deployed in a, in a cluster. 
Uh, others uh, want to show you just, uh, you know, mostly the pods. This one is generic in the sense that you can, you can find what you expect. You, you have a list of events, you have the list of pods, the list of workloads, um, you know, config maps, all that stuff. Uh, and it's 100% open source, uh, and it's a CNCF sandbox project, but you, of course, al already knew because you, you spotted it there, right? Uh, it's also, there's also, sometimes when you talk about Kubernetes UIs, there's this distinguish, uh, distinction. Uh, so some of them support multi-cluster, others support only one cluster. We support multiple clusters. It's uh, vendor generic, so we don't do things for, for them to work uh, very well on, for example, a uh, AKS or, uh, or EKS or some other uh, flavor. We, work, uh, we, we, we try to make things work very well on Kubernetes, right? Another distinction point is whether it's a, a desktop or a, C a desktop application or a CLI or a web uh, project. In this case, it's both desktop and web. It's basically the same U uh, UI, and you can find experience like that when you use, uh, I don't know, like, like chat tools like uh, Slack, for example. Uh, you have the same UI, and you can choose whether to, you, to run it on the web or to run it on the desktop. And then, and this is a, the, an important thing, um, you know, it's extensible through plugins, right? So you have the base uh, experience that we want to give to people, that we think it's a, it's a good experience uh, for uh, most users or all users. Um, but we also uh, support uh, what we call plugins, right? And these are front-end plugins, so you can change stuff in the UI, and you can interact, of course, with the Kubernetes uh, API, and you can do lots of things. And that's that's where I'm going with the, with the talk. So in here you can see you know, an example of a, of a screenshot with the logo uh, slightly changed. And in fact, this application is running as, uh, um, is running as a plugin in Headlamp. So this is the stuff I did yesterday. Uh, yeah, so let me go to the next slide. Yeah, so all of this I think can contribute to make uh, Headlamp kind of a unified UI for, for different tools, for different cloud-native tools. Uh, so for example, let me close this for a second. So uh, this is the demo part, so nothing will go wrong. And, uh, oh, but it's zoomed in, one second. Maybe this is better. Okay. So, um, yeah, so this is the home view. I have, I have some clusters in here. I can go to one of them, uh, one second, for example, this one. And in here, uh, even though it's kind of uh, slightly hidden, we already have uh, some, or maybe let's go to this one. Yeah, it's the same. Um, so for example, one of the tools we are using uh, from, from, the, from the ecosystem uh, is Prometheus. And if I choose one of these, so we have, uh, you know, th this part of the UI, the, the chart that you see there is, is powered by Prometheus, right? So in this case, it's not a UI for Prometheus, it's a UI that is powered by Prometheus. But of course, if you want to, to have a UI for, um, uh, you know, that has more, more options for people that are used to, uh, to running uh, uh, Prometheus and, and do more complex things, uh, Sometimes they also want to, to check the rest of the, of the cluster. They want to go deeper into pods. They, wa they want to, to check the events and see what's wrong. And having this together, I think uh, it's, a good, it's a good idea, right? Um, yeah, so another one that we have, uh, for example, is uh, Compose. This is a, a plugin that is not shipped with Headlamp. I actually created it for uh, coming here and having another one for demoing. Um, let's, let's check, for example, this, uh, this is a, a YAML that is part of the Docker uh, Compose uh, examples, I think. And I'll copy it. And then I paste it here. And I press to convert, and it will work for sure. It actually worked, I'm happy. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so, so you know, if, you, if you have run Compose, um, uh, before, this, this tool, of course, uh, translates the Docker Compose uh, YAMLs to the Kubernetes uh, ones. Uh, it's very convenient to use as a, as a CLI, of course, but 
uh, I can imagine that if, you, if you're a novice user and you want to, to use it, of course, it's a CLI, you have to check the options and all of that. And even though it's kind of an easy tool to, to use, uh, I'll grant that, probably this, uh, something like this is, is a bit more welcoming, right? And it's a bit more, um, I don't know, guided, right? So in this case, this is also um, running in the cluster itself. Uh, uh, when I press convert, this creates a job. The job runs uh, composed through a Docker. I do certain hacks so it gets the input in and out uh, in a way that I can read it. Um, and then it ends up uh, getting the, the result. If, if it fails, we get a nice error and we, we don't go to the, to the latest uh, part. If it doesn't fail, uh, which uh, is what it's supposed to do, then we get this YAML. And then, of course, uh, you know, since we are in, a, in, in again, a, a Kubernetes UI, we can just copy or press it here, I guess, and I can just open the editor that we have and start applying stuff in here, right? So just an example of, of how integrating tools uh, in a unified UI can be, uh, I think, a, a very positive thing for users that, uh, like me, are, are actually not Kubernetes experts. Um, let's see. So another, let me go back to the presentation. So another one uh, that we have is actually uh, the is actually powered by Helm and uh, Artifact Hub. Those are other tools, but that one is not available here. And that's because uh, it, when you're running as web or when you're running as desktop, maybe some of the tools you want to say, okay, I don't want to allow this uh, in, in a web environment, um, only in a desktop environment or only when it's running in cluster. So I'm actually gonna just stop here for a second, uh, stop this process and run the app. Takes a bit but it's because it's the development uh, part. All right, so now if we go to the same, uh, same cluster that I was at, we have another menu here. So this is what I was telling, like, you, as a developer, you can, of course, decide, okay, this is not adequate for the web. In this case, it's not adequate for the web because we are running certain things that we want uh, to just run locally, not in a, in a, you know, in a cluster. So this is, a, this is a plugin that, like I was saying, uh, shows, um, shows charts. In this case, they come from the Artifact Hub, which is a very nice um, you know, way of, of, uh, of, uh, of centralizing uh, the distribution of at least the information. And, uh, and yeah, we, and we, we call it like the app catalog, but, uh, but yeah, these are, these are charts. And then we press install, and we can run install from here, right? So it's very convenient. Okay, now I go back. One second. It's, it's working now. Uh, and and let, me, let me show you another couple of them. These ones, I have them in video because <laughs> I was not the one that uh, I didn't configure them, basically. So, um, so this one is about uh, Inspector Gadget, which is another uh, uh, CNCF sandbox project. Uh, about uh, running uh, eBPF uh, tools or gadgets. Uh, and that's, uh, and you know, I'm not an expert in uh, Inspector Gadget. I don't really understand what's going on <laughs> in there, and I don't know how to use it. Uh, but one of the people in my team created a, uh, is creating a, a, this uh, plugin, and if I look at this UI, I know more or less what I'm doing, right? So I don't, I don't have to go and check, okay, how do you run this command? What is a gadget? Like in here, it's kind of, if you understand more or less what, what this tool is about, which is about, uh, for example, uh, running, uh, I don't know, like traces uh, on a, on, in the cluster, understanding, okay, what, what kind of files are open, uh, what is the latency like, and stuff like that, uh, then having this in a, in a UI like this, I think it's very convenient. So, so in the demo, we're running the socket gadget, we choose the node, then we press uh, start. It starts uh, showing us, okay, these are the sockets in, in the system. Uh, you cannot really see it very well, but that, that uh, JSON that is in there shows you the, the address, for example. Um, yeah, another thing is, uh, for example, just another one. This is the TCP um, one. 
And again, the, the UI is very similar, so you can just quickly run it instead of trying to understand what are the options we have for running, uh, right? So this is what I meant by having a, a UI, and it's kind of a, a unified in a way that if you have used Headlamp, you know how things more or less work, what, you ex what to expect. That can be, uh, I think, very, very useful for uh, all users. And uh, the next one as another example is Minikube. So Minikube is, is not really, um, you know, uh, I'm trying to say that it's different from the others just because, uh, yeah, it's also a tool that you run, but you install and then you, you start and you stop and all that. And uh, I know that it made my life very convenient when starting uh, with Kubernetes. So we are creating this. This one is still under development, uh, but it's, it's like we are creating this, this plugin that you can just run Minikube from Headlamp. You don't have to have it installed. You don't have to uh, worry about, OK, I started. What, uh, what does it do, right? And uh, yeah, and, you, and it's basically, as you can see, if you run Minikube, this is basically just running the process and get you the output. But even that part, I think um, it's very convenient to have in a, in a UI, especially after we uh, hopefully add more options that you can see right there, like well, what kind of engine uh, you want for the, for the containers and whatnot, right? And uh, let's see. Let me go back. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, this is the, if I, if I fail to show all the stuff, but everything worked, so I'm happy. Right, so, so what about plugins? Uh, I showed you more or less what can be done. Um, the plugins in, the, in this case, they are uh, done in this way. We have this one package, one NPM package uh, that is uh, still called Kinfolk. Uh, headlamp plugin. Uh, this will get you uh, started. You can run this command uh, as an npx um, command and uh, call create. It will create like a like you know use the, the basically the the boilerplate that is needed for creating a, a plugin. Um, this is the one dependency that you need for uh, for your plugin. Then of course if you want to uh, to use more stuff, uh, I don't know any any other uh, uh, JS package that that you want. Of course you can add those. Um, yeah, and, and, and this, this package also brings, uh, of course, the, the, the APIs that you need to interact, not only with Headlamp, but also with the, the cluster. So we have a nice and convenient way for you to list pods, uh, for example, uh, for you to apply uh, stuff to the cluster if needed. Um, yeah, and you can change uh, stuff just like, the, for example, the branding, as, as, you, as you see there in the logo. Um, so yeah, so not... Not everything is possible to change, uh, but just because we always try to understand what exactly do uh, developers need, and when we have new, new use cases for, from people, we usually try to accommodate those, right? Um, yeah, so this plugin also grants that the common dependencies uh, are considered external modules. If you have it as a hobby to debug Webpack uh, stuff, uh, this means that you have uh, that the dependencies that are common to Headlamp will not be bundled together with your plugin, so that makes the the plugin size uh, smaller, which is important. Uh, yeah, the, you can you can check uh, examples that we have in the, in the repo. Every time we uh, open something for the plugins to use, uh, we try to have an example plugin showing how to use that uh, in the documentation. Um, you can also run tests and all that. Uh, yeah, and um, and for a couple of versions now, we have also uh, we 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 created a way for for the plugins to have settings for their own instead of just you know just just saving stuff. Uh, now there is a convenient way to do that, and there is a way to uh, to show that in a kind of a unified settings for for all the plugins, right, uh, or for each plugin. So that's in there. And uh, one thing that we didn't have until recently is, OK, you create a headline plugin, but how to find them, right? And uh, uh, of course, you have, you have the plugins that we develop, but other people have other plugins. And uh, the way that we are solving that is, uh, is by using Artifact Hub. So recently, we got, we got headline plugin as a format in there. And we're going to use uh, Artifact Hub to, to be kind of the, you know, is the centralized place to find 
uh, the plugins. Um, and a uh, plugin catalog, uh, or we, we call it plugin store, but you know, it's a, it's a pl plugin catalog is uh, currently under development. It's going to be out soon. Yeah, community. If you're interested in interacting with us, uh, the, that's the GitHub address. Uh, go there. Uh, show us why it's not working for you. <laughs> and um, if you want to chat, we're uh, on the Headlamp uh, channel in the Kubernetes Slack. And we also have social media stuff. This uh, screenshot that you see there is uh, actually not a CNCF tool. Uh, if I, uh, I hope I'm correct about that, but I don't think it is. But it's, uh, it's part of uh, an external company that uh, created this um, open source uh, plugin called EDP for their own Kubernetes uh, stuff. But I, always, uh, I like to show this screenshot because it's actually, I think they do, it's probably one of the most complex uh, plugins out there. And they do a lot of stuff, uh, and it's, uh, it's available on GitHub if you, f if you search for EDP uh, plugin uh, from this company called EPAM. And yeah, I hope you, you like the idea. I hope that it makes sense. And I hope to hear from you and that you make lots of headline plugins. Thanks. Thanks, Joachim. You left plenty of time uh, for questions. Are there any questions? Hey, so thanks for presentation. So my question would be, how flexible is UI to the point where I want to get rid of workloads, networking, like all the tabs which you showed, which are there? Because you talked about adding one, but if I want fresh start, nothing on the UI, is it possible? If you want to add what to the UI? I want to develop everything from scratch in the plugins without having anything what you showed in the UI yeah. present. Is okay, that okay. flexible enough? Okay. So yeah. So. Um, you don't get an empty canvas, right? It's not like our idea is uh, is that there is always going to be something in there that use that is useful for people. So you know, let's say uh, people maybe they want to list the pods. It's already in there. Certain functionality is already in there. But for example, if you want to say, I don't want any of these of these uh, routes or sections. Like I don't want to have a pod list. I don't want to have a deployment list. You can you can uh, remove those or you can override those. Right, so you can replace completely what the, the, the pod list looks like, or you can remove that, or you can add more sections. Right, but you cannot just go and, and I don't know, like, okay, instead of the sidebar being on the left, I want it on the right. Um, like I said, this is something that we, we try to accommodate as use cases come. So some of the things, um, in order for us not to have to, to support that ad eternum, we were like, okay, uh, we only have this, uh, these methods for plugins. Then, uh, then some, somebody would come and say, okay, uh, actually, I need to do this, right? And we check, okay, how can we open that to the plugins in a way that is flexible enough and in a way that will not bite us uh, uh, in, in, in the hand, on the hand <laughs> if, uh, if we have to, uh, you know, change it uh, in the future, right? So, so it's a, it, a, lot of, uh, a lot of it is actually uh, talking to the people that are uh, doing the plugins and trying to accommodate the requirements, basically. If we have the time, can can you show us a couple of community plugins that are really cool, kind of as as eye candy, or you know? Yeah. Well, I I can sh I can search for that EPM one. I did not prefer <laughs> prepare for that, but let's say you go to Bing and you you, you press EPM ADP plugin. There you go, first result. And uh, uh, oh, actually, this is not the yeah. I forgot to add, to add headlamp. Okay, there you go. Okay, so yeah, I'm not going to show you the, the full <laughs> the full five minute video. Uh, but you can see that they, they have their own section and they, they added quite a lot in there. Um, I don't know exactly, uh, I cannot explain you all this that, that they are doing, but they, they actually, like I said, have a lot of, the, um, a lot of complexity. And as you see, like, even the branding is, is slightly different. Uh, so I think that's, uh, 
you know, that's what we want. We want people to build on top of this, uh, even if that, uh, and if that means changing the branding, that's, that's completely fine. We want to work together. Uh, let's, let's perhaps show you, uh, for example, how to, uh, you know, what it looks like to, to just run a plugin. So once you get the plugin, which I will not do for that EDP, I'm sure it's, it's much more complex than this, but let's say you go, for example, let's do one of the example ones. So I go to, okay, you cannot really see this. Uh, one second. Okay, so you go to, uh, to our repo, plugins, examples. Then you go to one of them. Let me show you how the UI looks like now. Uh, okay, so this is, this is the UI, this is running. Uh, one second, this one. And now what you have to do to run is just uh, npm install, which uh, I don't need to do uh, because it's already, uh, I already got the dependencies. And then you do like uh, run start. Yeah, and it runs the it runs that command that I mentioned, uh, headline plugin, and then yeah, and then it basically bundles everything, adds it to the location uh, to the standard location where we have the plugins uh, to be run. And so now what it does is to change your logo here, and now if I go to uh, for example, uh, where's it uh, home? I go to the settings, plugins. I got the Change logo one, and this is an example of a setting, for example. So if I add a URL for something in here, uh, let me check. Maybe, uh, I don't know, Tux. I've tried this one before, that's why I'm not risking it. Uh, and now I copy the URL. Uh, I'm sure you're getting am amazed by my skills. Uh, Yeah, and you, you got me to, to do something that doesn't work. <laughs> but, but yeah, but we changed the logo, but not to the thing that I expected. Uh, anyway. Um, but yeah, like, I don't have uh, uh, like a, a big list of, of plugins that I know from, from, from people. I, I know uh, some, uh, and I know of some that, uh, yeah, that use this, but not in a public way. Um, but our idea with the Artifact Hub is that uh, once, once we have the, the, the plugin catalog, then it's going to be easier uh, and also promote that people add uh, stuff to, the, to Artifact Hub and they're going to see it and, and users will be able to install it, right? Which right now is kind of a manual process. All right, time for one more question. <laughs> yes, gentlemen. With so, uh, if yeah. you if you could pick one project that isn't integrated with Headlamp today that you'd love to see or you think would have a lot of uh, potential out of everything in CNCF, and I'm sure you're familiar with every single CNCF project, um, which one would that be? I'll, I'll bring I'll bring up the landscape picture and choose just to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I, d I don't know. Like, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure after the talk, what? The GitOps is, uh, and and also the, uh, for example, yes, the GitOps uh, stuff is something that we want to have. Uh, thanks for the <laughs> for the pointer. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's it's actually something we talked about in the team uh, that it would be nice. I think I, I think the point here is that I I, I don't want. I don't want to sound arrogant and, and, and think that everybody should have their, their plugin, right? But the point is that many of the tools, they want to also have uh, a way that people can list the pods and do this and that. So it, it would be nice if they, um, you know, if, they, if they do a plugin for Headlamp, then they can say, okay, we have this UI. Uh, if, you're, if you're doing the common things in, 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 uh, in a cluster, then you also have access to this tool. That's why I was, I was actually happy to, to get the, they compose one uh, to work just uh, just in time for the for for demoing it, because it's one of those that it's also very simple to run locally, 
but having the UI kind of uh, makes it much uh, more pleasant. Uh, but yeah, uh, GitOps is a good one. Um, I don't know. There, there are plenty in that catalog, and I don't want to choose the wrong one. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Joaquin. Thank you.